Praise the Lord. God is so good that he sends us his best. God sends us the servants of the Lord that have a word in due season. And what you're about to hear is how we have grown here at Rock City Church because we invite people to come in that have a real word from God, men that, and women that love God with all their hearts and have great integrity. And we bring them in to bless us here at this local church. And we get to share that blessing with you, the audience. Those of you that view this by video and by YouTube, you get to view what God does here at Rock City Church. It's a great time and a great uh, experience when we can come and uh, sit together and hear the word of the Lord and know that we're being uh, trained and we're being equipped to do all that God has us to do for his kingdom. So I bless you and I know you're going to enjoy the speaker today because he's got a word from the Lord just for you. God bless you. Enjoy the word. And when you see the title of what I want to share with you today, I want you to shout it out. It's coming down at the count of three. One, two, three. Ask! Thank you very much. Ask! You will discover in God's Word that God is more about you asking than it is about Him telling you what you're supposed to do. Now let me explain. Most young people... And even people who don't know the Lord well are all about the what. What do you want me to do, God? What? What's your will? What? 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 What am I? What? What am I supposed to do? And God says, get a life. And God says, ask. And I will give you the nations for your inheritance. And so if you'll read with me, let's all read together if we would. It's so very obvious that we can. And he said to them, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. Now the next screen will continue to read. And when you come to the words in black, let's just say them strong, because this is a big asking church. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give to him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And to him who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. For if a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Come on, give the Lord a hand right now. Thank God for his word. You will discover that as you notice, there's a progression there. Jesus is genius. He is the greatest communicator that ever lived. The crowds just absolutely were magnetized towards him. He was a sinner magnet. He was a kid magnet. People that had problems were attracted to Jesus because he had answers. From the A to the S to the K. Some are going, well, why? What's that all about? Well, check it out. A ask, and it shall be given. S ask, seek, and, and you shall find. Knock. 
knock and it shall. It shall be opened. You see, the word ask is actually an acronym for, for, the, tr for the strategy that Jesus gave us. Ask and it shall be given. S, seek and you shall find. K, knock and the door shall be opened. But for some reason in God's wisdom, he's opened up the ask box for you and me. And so the Lord would say to you and me, well, first of all, think of it this way. I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. You see, you've been graduated from what do you want me to do? Servant. What? What, what should I clean today? What? What's your will, master? Master, what's your will? And I understand that. There's a place for that. But Jesus graduated your relationship with him when he died on the cross. He said, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. And friends get to ask friends. All kinds of stuff. I'm going to give you three people that were asked to ask. And the first one would be Solomon. The, the, the wealthiest, wisest man that has ever lived. Early in his life, after he had had such a heart, a pure heart for the things of God when he was early in his life and he, and he sacrificed multiple thousands of sheep and goats and animals, whatever, to the Lord. God got so excited that he just decided to, just, just to go off. And, and he said to Solomon, Ask! What do you want? The Bible tells us that Solomon asked for wisdom. Solomon was a wise asker. And let me tell you why. What he did was awesome. Because God just got so excited about Mr. Wise Asker that he said, well, let me throw in, let me throw in all the other stuff that your flesh would have wanted, but you went with your spirit. And because you went with the core, which is wisdom, let me now just add on. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added. Now, 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 here's the point. The point is, is that when God says ask, it will reveal your motives and your mindset. Ask reveals the breadth of your life. Seek, and you shall find, reveals the depth that you're willing to go to get the breadth of what you've asked. God said to Abraham, sorry, God said to Solomon, ask, what do you want me to do for you? Let me give you another scenario. It's a guy named Elisha who had a mentor in his life called Elijah. Elijah said to Elisha, My mantle is going to be on you. God has told me to put it on you. You know what Elijah did to Elisha after he told Elisha that my mantle's on you? He started treating him, treating him like, just leave, get out, get out, leave me alone. And Elijah headed off. And Elisha followed right behind. See. 
You think because God said, here's a blank check, ask, that you're not going to go need to go deep? You, you will never get this without this. Seek is a decision on your part. But watch what happens. Ask given, seek, find. Have you ever found something? I mean, you lost it, and then you found it. How many of you have lost a wedding ring? And then you, you found it. And it was almost worth losing it. <laughs> to find it. Because if you wouldn't have lost it, you wouldn't have appreciated finding it. Oh, the woman with a lost coin. You see, God in his wisdom has created these parables and these stories. Let me tell you what, I frankly would love to lose what's important to me so that I can find what's important to me. So Elijah is trying to ditch Elisha. Seriously, he's trying to ditch him. He's, he's like, I'm going to go to Jericho. You stay here. No, you're not going to Jericho without me. And so here's this Elisha following Elijah. And Elijah finally gets frustrated enough, turns around, and points his finger and says, ask, what do you want? And Elisha says to Elijah, I want double. I want double, sir, of what you have. Have a happy day. <laughs> no, seriously, he asks for double. Because seek will reveal your measure. Ask reveals your motive. Seek will reveal your measure. And guess what Elisha got? Double the blessing. Because he asked. Come on, somebody. He asked for it. I want double. K. Knock, and it shall be opened. Because you see, if you'll ask, your breadth will be revealed. If you seek, the depth will be revealed. But then you just got to get out there and start knocking on some doors. You got to have nerve. You got to ask people for stuff. You got to make the phone call. You need to call. You need to, because doors open to people who ask and who knock. Okay. Knock and the door shall be open. Esther. You see, A, A ask will reveal your, 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 your motive and your mindset. M, sorry, S, S reveals your, your, your your measure, here's the third M. Knock will reveal the meaning of your life. Now let me explain that. Because Esther was missing in action. Her people were going to be annihilated. Thank God for uncles. Like Mordecai, who came to Esther, Miss Queen, beautiful just, she's eternity perfume. She's just living large. <laughs> like oils and lotions for a whole year before she even was delivered to the king for his perusal. She's just one beautiful piece of humanity. She's loving her life. But her people are set to be annihilated. And Uncle Mordecai tells her about it. And she says, what, what, what? What? That what thing again? What? What? What am I? What? what? What's your will, God? What am I supposed to do? 
and she's trying to get out of it, because we all do. And then what did Mordecai do? He pulled up out of her spirit. He says, who knows if you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this? And something clicked in Esther, and she went, hey, tell everybody, I'm fasting for the next three days. Join me. Nothing will touch my lips. And I will go before my husband, who happens to also be the king. And if I perish, I perish. I'm going to go knock on some doors. Yeah, if you're willing to go knock on some doors and don't care if you live or die, doors will open. Because he has a woman who has understood that if you ask and you seek, you need to knock, but ask for strategy. Okay, now they, he has lunch. He has lunch. At this lunch, the king says, Ask, queen, up to half the kingdom. And she let it rip. My people are up for execution. They are going to be killed. And the king goes, what do you? Who would ever come up with a plan like that? Mr. Haman right there. <laughs> Haman goes, oh. The king is ticked. He gets up and he leaves. Goes to his courtyard. Haman realizes, I'm done. I'm done unless this woman has mercy on me. He throws himself on her lap. Bad mood. <laughs> in that culture, in walks the king. Not only do you want to kill her people, but now you're making moves on my honey. <laughs> he wasn't even making moves on he was just trying to get some mercy. And the king says, now you're going for my wife. If you'll ask, you must seek. And if you'll seek, you'll find. And if you knock, you will have the wisdom to know what doors, when the doors. And God will, watch this, just orchestrate things that look like coincidences, but they're providences because they're God incidences because you have paid the price to see doors open. Father, I thank you for a church that asks 